Welcome back, Zero K fans, to the February 2018 1v1 tournament. I remain your host, Dominic, along with Hokomoko, and we're going to be moving on hey. to round six. The second to last round, starting out with Wesley Boss versus Fielthos on Downpour. Both very, very strong players. Um, this map is actually also full of reclaim like the previous map. Um, it's a lot of water, too, and there's some reclaim in the middle. I really don't know what people will pick. Uh, maybe uh, Cloakies, but everything is really possible. I'm thinking Hovers. I think it might be Cloakie oh. versus Hovers, actually. Or Amphib versus Hover. Although, I don't know. If, like, Amphib is kind of wonky, but like, if your opponent's going Hovers, I maybe there's room for that, especially with all the water around the side. There's a lot of reclaim everywhere. On the water, on the ground, just everywhere. So maybe Hover is... Is great decision. And it reminds me of a couple other maps that are really hover focus, which is why I'm bringing it up because it's like that's that's just what you see most of the time. I really like maps that are um, three way, and you play one versus one on them because it, it kind of that they are designed in a way that. Um, allows you to contain the enemy and expand to the new place. So it's a bit about knowing how much to send to m keep your enemy occupied and then send as, as little as possible to, um, you know, to, to expand and to, to mm -hmm. exploit the ground that you've just got for yourself. That being said, this map, being as small as it is, might make the difficult. And we do see West going for Amphib. We are going to see Amphib this tournament. It's happening. Okamoko, your favorite factory. Uh, it, it is, you know, it's not as good as it has been. Uh, but I hope we'll see West boss using it to great effect. Um, and Duck still one-shot Glaives. It's, mm -hmm. it's not a joke. Um, and when Glaive Factory doesn't have Glaives... That it's not a factory make anymore. things. It, it's not a factory. No, but you will see Felto switching to Rocco's before you even s begin thinking. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if Felto that starts with Rocco's, like Conjure and Rocco or something. Nope, Conjure and Glaive. Yeah. Okay, well, we are going to see a bit of raiding going on, but Ducks immediately from Wes. Makes sense. Well, someone has to quack. They're playing Amphib, you just have to. No choice. It's part of the... Uh, part of the deal. Well, at this point, Wes does have at least a decent enough starting setup. They have enough they can push forward. They have, obviously, like I said, they can one-shot the Glaives, so they're not going to worry about anything else. And they're immediately going forward, or at least they had... Yep. Their commander's going to be immediately going to the center of the map as soon as they're done that Lotus. So at this point, Wes is being extremely forward and relying on the ducks entirely to handle that for them. Both commanders are going straight to the middle. Oh, they are. Yeah. Wow. That's going to be an interesting. That's going to be kind of like last match, I think. And we've seen before, Wes can handle. Are, and the ducks are good because they're actually containing the glaives. Um, no, no, no. Now the commander is coming and will kill ducks. Oh, and with that, that means the Glaives have more room to maneuver, which means that the center is more open, which is actually kind of risky. We are going to see West just infinite build ducks for the time being, but like you said, Failthaz already going for the Ronin because they know. They they need it. They're not going to be able to get through these ducks otherwise, and I guess Boy's probably going to see that afterwards because that's pretty much the response the Amphib Factory has, although you'd know better. Well, um... I don't know if an archer is going to happen, but for now, only ducks. Um, the Bronin isn't as much a response as, as you know, the, the final answer until the Grizzly. Um, but with Wesley, he has a nice expansion. He's going spending, naked expanding in the top. He has now the middle, and he's going to reclaim quite a bit of metal here. It's going, like, I don't know where it's going. I well, really don't. It's clearly going in their favor, especially if they manage to keep that reclaim secure. And since they have the northern side, that's opposite side of Filthas. Filthas has to go through the center, which is already starting to be built up by Wesley in order to raid Wes's expansion. Like That is the cleverest part of this. If Wes can keep their commander alive, at least. 
Well, seems like Felthas managed to push Wes away, but. No, yeah, but it's no, a question of can that. We're not used. Is that just going to be a stalemate? We're into my it is possible. Well, <laughs> it, it's fun seeing uh, stalemates exactly on the point of um, so much metal. And the one thing I'm thinking no, is that West right now, they still I still say they have a slightly better position of getting over to Fealthos, but then Fealthos suppose could go around the right side of the map, like could go around the could go around the right, same way that West could go around the top. So there are options, especially with the center now kind of being broken and West being pushed away from it. That does mean that West's north western expansion is not necessarily the most secure thing in the world. Still though, they've. They've got lotuses. They're they're well aware that it's possible. Ooh, but at the same time, and there's a duck in the back. What is this thing duck. doing? Yeah, but it stayed in place too much time. Uh, Felsus didn't put a lotus in its base, which is slightly amusing. No, but that duck has the water. They can fall back in that, start healing up. Yeah. So they're going to be yeah. fine. Yeah. Assuming they actually stay in the water and don't just go back up to their deaths. What, what is that thing doing? You don't heal on land. I, don't, uh, <laughs> uh, well, I mean, it's I ducks. It's, they they have their own. I don't know. They have if their they own suicidal tendencies, apparently. They, yeah, exactly. You can't I, play ducks and keep it safe. It's not. It's not how you do it. You have to go inside and cause mayhem. But basically, I like to think of ducks. Is puppies that sometimes fire more than once. <laughs> they have so much alpha. I like that. That's a that is a way of thinking about them that makes a lot of sense. And, Although that being said, the water the, is here that they can heal. <laughs> right. Yeah. The, and, and of course, and they don't great goo, but but that doesn't matter. Just like a very very strong offensive weapon that can just go inside places and wreak havoc. And then die. Um, and then die. Yes, it's part of the deal. That's not the best deal, but I mean, I guess it works not reasonably well. Although I guess it's also why we don't see a lot of Amphid, because that's not a great deal. Especially as Fieldtoss is managing to get a bit more of an economy as well. Wes is, Wes is getting expansions. They are roughly at parity, and the only thing they have going for them right now is production. Fieldtoss with no caretakers compared to Wes who also has no caretakers, but has been building up a lot more around the map, and thus not been excessing. Mostly turning it into power infrastructure. I'm surprised that Wes doesn't take these two maxes that are near his base. Like These two? They're so close. Yeah, me too, actually, because that's that's threatened now, but for the last five minutes it, it's been pretty open. I guess they just figured they were yeah. really focusing on getting the much safer northern expansions, not really worrying about these ones that are harder to defend, and that, I mean, they're it kind of puts them in an awkward position, really. Because if you think about it, this is low ground. So that can be harder to hold on to if your opponent happens to get this this cliff edge, which at this point, Fieldtoss has. Like, that is the thing overall. I'm seeing Wesley is kind of on the back foot now that they've lost the center. They can go around a little bit to take the eastern expansion, but if these ducks... When these ducks go down, that's going to leave very little in the way of offensive power over to the northeast. And West, yes. they've got the reclaim, but that's it. Yeah, they got the reclaim, but but no, this not using it as well. They're accessing. It's not a good. I think Wes is trying to go to t take the buoys and send them into into the into Felsa space, but. Mm. I think it would have been better to come from the water uh, and not from the ground. Um, I agree. That is the thing. No. Like, that is the thing to bear in mind in this map. This is water. This exists. The island isn't the only thing. That's why you'd go for amphibs. But at the same time, it does mean that they can stop these glaives from doing much. They get spotted, yes, but they're also going to discourage some of the glaives and possibly pull back all the forces here. But it seems unlikely. I don't see West managing to hold on to this. I mean, the Stardust, it's all well and good, but now that it's gone, there's nothing stopping this entire army from moving in and possibly killing the Conch in the process, which it does! So that's the Northern Expansion, the safer expansion, gone, and this low ground, like you said, hasn't been built up yet. West is clearly much more focused on the Reclaim. 
Meanwhile, the buoys are getting in place. Will the Spectre be on time? A Phantom. That changes names. Phantoms wreck buoys. Yes. I always have. And they will be able to... It will come up. There's nothing stopping it. it. Like, the buoys should be able to take a bit of damage or deal a bit of damage in the process. But there it is. It's up. That's a buoy down. Could see a few more of these metal extractors go down as well. But looks like... It looks like Wes is deciding no. retreating into the water well, is the best thing to do. To, to, yeah, to keep it that uh, keep the woods alive. A very, very smart choice from Feltas to make this phantom. But look at the north. The buoys came there and they did their job. The enemies away. Yeah. And, and at this point, now the rockers are coming to the north. To the Oof. commander. Let's see what's happening. And the commander has nothing. The commander has absolutely nothing. This is a perfect calm killer force. There are three Lotuses. That's true. Three Lotuses is not a joke. But the ro the Ronin can still hit the commander from outside the Lotus range. And that's the dangerous thing. I'm actually not sure why Wes is reclaiming all this energy stuff anyway. Well, the metal the stuff makes some sense, but it's so risky. Okay. At least at this oh. point, yeah. Now now the rock the Ronin cannot get in. And the rebuilding has been completed. Wes again having the economic advantage. And the boys... Boy's trying to take the center, but not managing to find too much, and I don't see no. I don't see a whole this lot of opportunities for Wes. Like critical mass of boys, that's all I can think of. And they don't have it. No, it, it yeah. Like eight or nine buoys at the same place are a really hard for us to deal with, although with a Spectre a Phantom what names. Um, with the Phantom, you can hold it off. Uh, just that I cannot see it happening. I mean, a and Grizzly now maybe, has so but, much yeah. metal. Yeah, yeah, I don't see it happening no. either. Or not even a Grizzly. Oh, look, like... look, 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 the, the buoys are now having fun. It's oh, not yeah. a game-winning thing, but they're... A bit it's of damage fun. to the back lines. The yeah. water became useful. The Spectre's out, or the Phantom's out of position. It's not, this like I said, it's not enough. This is what should have happened in the first, in the first place. If Wesley would have sent the, the boobies around in the first place, I think the factory could have been gone. Yeah. And there's the Grizzly. Last ditch effort. I don't really see it being built fast enough with the forces coming in. The only thing stopping them looks like is, well, just waiting for regrouping. That's it. Field us regrouping. But once that regroup happens, there's not much stopping them. And they have a massive advantage. 3,000 metal for attrition. And for production overall, they've used an, an additional 2,000 metal. So they have a 5,000 metal lead in unit value. That is not something you easily get through. And the Grizzly is not going to even things out either. Unless it manages to kill the Rockos. But right now, there's already a pretty perfect Grizzly killing force right here. And the gunship plant is starting to rebuild. It's like and finishing to rebuild oh, with all this yeah. metal. Oh. And Wesley is saying, "Yeah, and this is just starting." I, well, this is decided. Just decided. Yeah, there's. And the quiz yeah. was cancelled. <laughs> I can see why. I'm not. I can't say I'm surprised. Yeah. Just get something, anything. The yeah. ducks can at least deal with the Rockos or the Ronin reasonably well. Not great. But it's not as one-sided as the boys. Like, the boys, they, with this many can, rock, Ronin will just get surrounded. Yeah, the, the ducks can drive them away a bit, but it costs ducks. You yes. sacrifice ducks for land and not ducks for Ronin. But there's also the, prong, the second the prong over in the northeast. Like, the boys trying to deal with the Ronin over in the northeast, enough. but finding very little. And brawlers are coming. Yeah, Nimbus. Yeah, Nimbus now. But we know what you mean. It's that yeah. is there to just finish things off because there's not much left, honestly. I mean, I like that Wes is trying, but there's just too much. Like, like any front they try to fight on, they're fighting at a disadvantage, and there's more than one front they're fighting on. So not bad start coming out from Wes there, but it just did not work out. Field Thoughts managed to get that economy going. Well, it's not, yeah. Managed to get everything else set and up. Managed to get the center, really. And Wes throws the towel. 
two. That has game. That's Amphibs for you, and this is why I don't pick them. Despite the fact that they've been your favorite that... factory historically. Yes. Like, it, it was fun bringing them into meta, but, but things changed, and, and they cannot really give a good fight. Even on this map, it is very, very hard to make good use of Amphibs. And that's, I know, I just, there are ways, though. Like, you mentioned there are ways of using the outside water and taking advantage of the reclaim out there and doing all this stuff. Like, it's a bit hard because you possibly lose land, but it exists. I cannot uh, really, like, fault Wesley for trying to get through the land because, uh, you know, they wanted to do it as fast as possible, which mm -hmm. has gains. Like, they didn't have our visibility. They didn't know that Felthas actually had units that could... Um, either see them or delay them or anything. It was a swift strike to kill the enemy. Um, the fact that it didn't work is, you know, we know it, but they didn't know it in advance. That's exactly right. And it looks like at this point, everyone, everyone except 400 Google Frog are done. So I'm curious what's going on with them, because that was the other match I wanted to see. I will join. With how things have been going this tournament, it's probably going to end exactly when we join. <laughs> well, at least we get to see, have a bit of an overview of what happened. Because that's always cool. This is... Yeah. <laughs> Ooh, Amphib Mirror. Oh, that's new. I mean, 400 clearly getting a little bit more of an advantage on that and knowing really where to use the water as you were talking about before. And archers! Hey! Archers were a thing! Very briefly, and then died. <laughs> As for scalps, hey, people are actually using the amphib plant units, not just ducks and ducks and boys. Uh, yeah, it sounds ridiculous, I know. I know. The factory has more than two units. Well, three units with the grizzly. But it's more than two units in the strider. It's got <laughs> other stuff. No one ever uses it, but it has it. Well, they do uh, scallop drops. That's true. Scallop drops are a thing. But that is not the same for Orange Commander, which was taken out early on. That being said, though, no one has much of an economy. Everyone's harassing everyone to the point that they're still running, essentially, basic economy, and that's with 400 having lost their commander. It's just main base economy, and that's it. Nothing else can be held. But Google Frog looks like they're what? finally managing to make some progress around the 12-minute mark. Watch how Google Frog has raiders spread out on places where they don't even have anything built. Mm-hmm. And, oh, not this only like... that. The the ducks in the water there, that was brilliant from Google Frog. I mean, looks like 400 is managing to find some room to maneuver and also using the outside water, which is very nice to see. But the advantage is so hard in Google Frog's favor economically that like one good push is going to end this game. And, and this push is happening. Yep, there it is, right as the game catches up. So, hey, we get in right again, as you said, when the game is probably over. Well, the 400 is building up a fair bit over to the south, and Google Frog has been heavily excessing, so there's actually a good shot for 400 if they manage to survive this push, which they have no units with which to do so. But if by some miracle they survive the push, they're not over yet. They've got some money. Just by some miracle. Because there's not much holding on to them here. <laughs> the miracle factory has been removed from the game, unfortunately. Um, yeah, it's 400's... <laughs> 400 has not got much. I mean, they have the southern expansion, which I don't see getting much mileage, because Google Frog is just going to build up their army, and that doesn't help you. Like, that's a thing in RTS games. If someone, if you've lost basically everything you've probably lost, your opponent will be able to rebuild stuff in the meantime. That's just generally true. And 400 realizing um, this throws in the towel. Oh, wow. 400 had a massive value advantage early on. Oh, massive unit metal advantage early on, but not so much unit value advantage. I mean, we saw that before Google Frog was able to just surround everything and take it out, but ah, oh, that was a lot of really good plays. That was both players really using that water effectively.
Well, at this point, that is round six, so we're going to be moving on to round seven pretty well as soon as it gets set up. So we'll be back in a couple minutes at most with that. <laughs> 